Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation. We're going to be solving for integers, this equation, 1 over a plus 5 plus 1 over b minus 3 equals 1. So a and b are integers and we're going to be finding all the solutions. Now first of all, notice that in this equation, since a plus 5 and b minus 3 are in the denominators, a cannot be negative 5 and b cannot be 3. So those are the only restrictions we have. Other than that, we're good. So let's go ahead and talk about the solution methods. I'll be presenting three methods, even though the third one is like, oh, come on. You already know this, right? I'm pretty sure you already guessed it, but let's save it for the last part. So I'll start with the first method. For my first method, I'm just going to make a common denominator. Okay, straightforward, brute force. Uh, multiply crisscross applesauce. You're going to get a plus 5 plus b minus 3 divided by the product, which is a plus 5 times b minus 3. But that equals 1, so we could as well, you know, we might as well just write it the whole thing together. a plus b plus 2 is equal to the product. Let's go ahead and multiply this uh, distributed, a b minus 3a plus, plus 5b minus 15. Awesome. Now, I'd like to keep the product on the right-hand side, so I want to bring everything to the right-hand side. How about that? And write it on the left-hand side. So switch sides, but bring everything to the right-hand side. So I have an AB minus 3A minus A, right? Remember this, you have to bring this right. So it's going to be AB minus 4A. And then I have a 5B, but I'm bringing a minus B there. So that's going to be a 4B. Oh, man, we missed the 2B there. And then we're going to bring a 2 here. Or we could keep the 2 there. How about uh, sending the negative 15 over to the left-hand side? But this is going to be on the right-hand side now. I hope it's not too confusing. And this becomes AB minus 4A uh, plus 4B is equal to 2 plus 15, which is 17. Awesome. This is pretty simple, right? Now we're going to do Simon to this equation. Simon says, you know, he has this favorite factoring trick which uh, allows us to factor this by grouping. But we're missing a term here. So we're missing a constant. We're going to determine that constant after we factor the first two terms. So I'm going to take out an a here. That means I have b minus 4. And now I do want to have b minus 4 here, but I have to have a 4b, so I need to put a 4 here. That means I'm adding a negative 16 to both sides or subtracting 16, which gives me a 1 on the right-hand side. Fairly easy, right? You're just subtracting 16 from both sides, and then this becomes factorable, factorable by grouping, and then you just factor it by grouping. Awesome. So now we have a plus 4 multiplied by b minus 4 equals 1. This should be fairly easy because think about it. Like we're talking about integers. If a and b are integers, a plus 4 and b minus 4 are also integers. No need to prove that, right? And their product is 1. So there's only two pairs of integers whose product is 1. 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1. So first case scenario, we're going to set both of these equal to 1. So from here, we get the following. If a plus 4 is equal to 1, that means a is equal to negative 3. Now, one thing that we always need to check these values against our restrictions. But let's go ahead and do the b as well. b minus 4 is equal to 1 and b is equal to 5. Now initially remember we said that a cannot be negative 5 and b cannot be 3. We're not violating that rule, are we? We're not. So we're good and these solutions are valid. So we're gonna use them. How about the second case scenario? The second case scenario is basically you have the negative 1 and the negative 1. Let's go ahead and do it over here. If a plus 4 is equal to negative 1 this means a is equal to negative 5. And if b minus 4 is equal to negative 1, that means b is equal to 3. But pay attention to this. a cannot be negative 5. b cannot be positive 3. Therefore, this is not possible. So that leaves us with one ordered pair for the solution. a comma b can only be negative 3 comma 5. And they're not interchangeable. All right? Cool. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method now. For my second method, I'm going to use substitution, obviously, and that simplifies the process. Now, it, it's kind of like the same solution, but I'm not going to use the exact same steps, so that'll be slightly different. Hopefully, you will uh, let me know what you think. So I'm going to set a plus 5, which is in one of the denominators, right? Uh, I want a plus 5 to be something. How about x? And b minus 3 to be y. So, this definitely simplifies our equation, but notice that 
since now our new denominators are x and y, we get something like 1 over x plus 1 over y equals 1. Obviously, we do not want x and y to be 0 because that would make our expression undefined. You don't want that, right? That's a no-no. So x cannot be 0, y cannot be 0. You don't want that. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at what follows. Since we have this equation right here, we can go ahead and isolate one of the variables. That, that's why I told you this uh, solution method is slightly different from the first one. So I would like to isolate 1 over y. It doesn't matter because, you know, we have this symmetry. A at least x and y are symmetrical. A and b aren't, but a x and y are symmetrical. So it doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and make a common denominator and then flip both sides. And this gives us y equals x over x minus 1. Now, I want to manipulate the numerator in such a way that I can make it look like the denominator. So it's kind of like x minus 1 plus 1 is equivalent to x, right? And now this allows me to separate this into two fractions, kind of like on add. So from here, y becomes 1 plus 1 over x minus 1. Pretty much the same method because if you subtract 1 and cross multiply, you, pr you pretty much get the same thing. But it just looks a little different. We're going to look at divisors of 1, and they can only be 1 or negative 1. But notice that if x minus 1 is 1, that means x is equal to 2, which is good. But if x minus 1 is negative 1, that means x equals 0, and that's no good. So we can only use x equals 2, and if we plug it in, we also get y equals 2. And notice that I told you that we have perfect symmetry, which means that when x is 2, y is going to be 2 because they are interchangeable. Well, it's not necessarily true, but in this case, it happens to be true. If we got a different value for y, that, means, uh, that meant we could uh, switch them, but the original solution didn't have that. So anyways, I talk too much, so let's go and stop. Uh, but from here, uh, a comma b is just going to be negative 3 comma 5 because remember, a plus 5 is x and b minus 3 is y. And from here, we get the following values as before, right? Uh, what about the other one? It doesn't count because x equals 0 is not going to work. Let's go ahead and take a look at the third method. And I know so for the third method, you're probably going to laugh at it. But like, come on, we already knew that, right? That's so easy. I know some of you are saying that. OK, so here's how the third method works. Think about it. And this is a really cool topic because we're kind of getting into the realm of maybe unit fractions or Egyptian fractions, maybe. So we're thinking about two unit fractions, right? The denominator, the numerators are one. Two unit fractions that add up to one. What can they be? One half and one half, obviously, right? One half plus one half equals one. Case closed. That's it. All right, great. From here, we get a plus five is equal to two, which means a is negative three. And if b minus three is equal to two, we get b equals five. And those are the solutions as you know. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.